Of all the dangerous game Africa offers up, the Cape Buffalo is the most plentiful, and for that reason, more hunters pursue them each season than any other dangerous game species. And the odds prove, year in and year out, that more hunters will face potential run-ins with buffalo than any other game. Unwounded, he's generally happy to graze, rest, breed, and chew the cud of contentment. But never let your guard down in his country. A bull that has had a rival bull stick a horn in him, or has survived the mauling from lions, will take out his pain on you if you blunder into him. But wound him, and as the Top Gun song says, you are definitely on the highway to the danger zone. From a physical standpoint, a buffalo is impressive from every angle. He has a massive and dense bone structure that can deflect even the best of bullets. Buffalo are wounded for a number of reasons. Nerves can and do affect shooting, and buffalo, especially buffalo at close range, can rattle even seasoned hunters. Thick cover and buffalo go hand in hand in most cases, and bullet deflection has caused many a shot to spin into his guts instead of his vitals. Even a perfect shot into those vitals, unless it hits the brain or shatters the spine, will rarely drop a bull in his tracks. Upon taking your bullet, he'll generally charge headlong into whatever direction his nose is pointing. The legendary ability of a Cape Buffalo to absorb punishment is aptly demonstrated on the following hunt. June 28th, um, a day I will never forget. You know, we covered probably, um, I don't know, uh, six or seven miles slow going, looking for tracks in the dusty uh, roads. And sure enough, the guys uh, spotted a track from the front and uh, it was a large group of, of Cape Buffalo. There was uh, seven bulls in the group and it was you know, game on from there. Literally 50 yards from the tracks in the road, it was an impenetrable wall of Mopani and uh, camel thorn, just extremely thick, a wall. Every five foot was the, the next view of about maybe 10 yards and that was it. It was 10 yards visibility and, and pretty much we had to be head down trying to look for legs at this point. Within 15 minutes, we saw the first rump of a Cape Buffalo. The great thing about being up close like that is that we, we were able to listen to those bulls going through, mostly the noise of them walking and breaking branches, but then we could hear the, you know, the vocalization between the bulls. The distance was about 35 to 40 yards at that point, so everything's in slow motion and the bulls are moving from our left to right. My lifelong hunting partner, Dominic Lepano, was really looking also for a sable. So he had his 300 Norma mag, just in case, you know, we came across it. But he was really excited to be on the stock with me for Cape Buffalo. And at that point, I thought to myself, we're probably gonna be 21 yards when that bull emerged. He was tracking through the trees. And if that was the right bull, we were gonna end up at 21 yards. I didn't feel comfortable in the sticks. So I knew offhand, you know, that I'd be able to make the shot. When I first saw the bull, it was in very heavy Mopani coming through the trees. And I had my, my Swarovskis up and I saw the right side and heavy boss, and I said, yes, this is definitely a great bull. They're standing here in that big stuff. You see this black? Yeah, they're riding that big, big stuff. Definitely well over 40, and definitely old and hard horned. Put the binoculars down, and again, offhand, I waited for a place that he was gonna come into. I finally determined that I could take a shot, a chest shot, and I was trying to go mid-stern, maybe a little bit lower, and I squeezed the shot off. Just wait, just wait, just wait. The 
The reaction of the bull was absolute, like nothing happened. He literally took the shot and was running from left to right in front of me. I bolted and followed and um, unfortunately, um, I don't think the camera caught this, but my second shot was a, a smooth shot and I felt really good with the shot. It felt really good. At that point, I thought, um, two good shots, I figured he'd move off and we'd hear a death bellow. Unfortunately, uh, that was not the case here. Through the thick Mopani, and particularly there's a, there's a very old growth, it blocked my view from where, being able to see the bull after my second shot. The bull went out and I could just see legs and he hooked back around left the group which was walking away from us and came back around to find me. Shoot him, Julius. Shoot him. Julius. Came on a charge and literally at three feet, the gun barrel was right there. I shot him in the face. I saw the impact and I dove out of the way and he went right by the cameraman and went right by and went right by you at that yeah. point. Everything happened so quickly, but uh, as soon as I wanted to put in my first shot, the, the angle was just bad and I shot the buffalo or shot him once and he just passed me I shot him again and he was tossing Dom around in the air and hopefully everything, Dom is not injured too badly. Dominic was hit, hit him in the chest and his whole feet went straight up in the air. It looks like his collarbone may be dislocated or, or broken, but my partner is, is fine. There's nothing else yeah. than that. And literally he had five or six lethal rounds in him at that point and he went by after the double yes. 470 hit him. And then he literally died over here about 25 yards away. He gave us a run for our money, and thank God everybody did some really good shooting. Everybody stayed calm, and, and we're, we got to take Dominic to the hospital for his shoulder. And uh, thank God we're all here. Uh -huh. And uh, wow, that's all I can say. The bull had absorbed three perfectly placed shots from Julius's custom 416 shooting 450 grain bullet before turning back and launching a dedicated charge with Julius putting his last bullet into the bull's face at the very end of his barrel. Further investigation revealed that the second shot had destroyed the buffalo's heart. Even still, carried by anger and adrenaline, it made it back to heavy cover before it expired. Hunting truly dangerous game is not for everyone. It's easy to get excited when reading about it in books and magazines, but if you intend to accept that risks are the pathway to rewards, you will find out a lot about yourself as your adventure and knowledge expands. Yet the risks are real, with danger and even death sometimes hovering near, ready to add you to a terrible list if bad shooting or bad luck suddenly visits. We've buried dear friends, actually brothers, who despite decades of experience in this intense profession, finally ran into a situation where even skill and accurate firepower were not enough to save themselves. I think especially about professional hunting legends like Owen Lewis and Ian Gibson. And I know every time that I leave the tent that if these men lost the ultimate fight with dangerous game, that it could happen to me in an instant. Hunting dangerous game is indeed a challenge like none other. Let those of us who decide to accept the risk play this game honestly, ethically, and always with the knowledge that there is indeed a reason they call them dangerous game.